So uh, I just want to reiterate it again. I've already gone through it so much already, but I just want to reiterate it again, why frame advantage is so important. And as messed up as this sounds, if you are playing fighting games correctly, a lot of the times you're not letting your opponent play at all. One of the best goals of fighting games is to make sure that your opponent doesn't get a chance to play. And what we mean that is, be, what we mean by that is, don't give them the opportunity to have other options available to them. So while they're in neutral, they get to play fighting games. They get to make the choices. Should I whiff a button to try to control space? Should I dash forward to catch him off guard? Should I throw a projectile to egg the opponent to jump at me? Should I uh, activate my, uh, my instinct mode? Should I sidestep because I think he's going to attack with a running attack? Should I call my assist to come and attack? You know, while you're in a neutral state, you get a chance to play the game. So what you want to do is not let your opponent play the game. And this doesn't necessarily mean locking them down in combos or anything like that, but this is making sure you're taking away all of their options at every given moment you can. So the more time you can act when they cannot, the better your chances are to win. If all they do is block your plus moves and you knock them down and they block your jump attack and then you knock them down and then you lock them down with an assist and then they block and then they knock them down. Even if they're defending the whole entire time, even if you haven't hit them yet, you are still preventing them from playing because they're stuck in block stun for this huge amount of time and they can't do anything. And as long as they don't have their options available to them, that makes makes you that much more frightening. That makes you that much more scary. And the more time that you can act and they cannot, that is where you jump to the next phase of the fighting game flowchart, which is the mix-ups. Again, I'm going to go all the way back to the fighting game flowchart here. Mix-ups are the next phase. And so again, your goals in all of fighting games is to go from the top to the bottom of this flow chart repeatedly through the game. So you're trying to go neutral to pressure to mix-ups to combos to okazeme to mix-ups to combos to ok mix-ups to okazeme to pressure to okazeme and to back to neutral. Okay, now start all over again. You're trying to go keep going down. Your goal is to keep going down this phase of the flow chart. And if you can continue to do that repeatedly, you are in a great position. So again, Frame advantage gives you the opportunity for a mix-up. Now, why have I separated frame advantage and mix-up as two different things? Because you can give yourself frame advantage, but if you don't actually go for a mix-up afterwards, then you are wasting your frame advantage. And it is so easy to waste your frame advantage. For example, I'm going to go back to the game here for a little bit of the uh, example here. I've already showed you the kind of advantage that Ryu can get if the opponent blocks my jump attack. So if I do this, I get an advantage here. However, if for some reason I've decided in my head, I'm going to do this every time I land a jump attack. The advantage that I gained from landing that jump attack, from getting them to block my jump attack, means absolutely nothing. If I always do this because this is a fun combo, and if they do get hit by it, I can actually get my cool combo that I practice in training mode. Oh, look at that, it's my four hit combo. So no matter what, every time I jump in, I do this, and they blocked it. Oh, well, I pushed myself, I'm safe. You are not advancing your phase of frame advantage into a mix-up. You're just going, uh, 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 uh. And your opponent's going to block 100% of the time, and they're going to take a tiny bit of chip damage, and they'll be fine. This is not a mix-up. Even though you got the frame advantage, you did not get a mix-up. And you have to understand how to turn your frame advantage into a mix-up. And so, like I said, I've separated mix-up into its own category because, like I said, in the future, we will have several episodes on how to mix your opponent up.
But again, just as a quick example here, I can do jump into throw, so now they're scared. I could do jump into immediate low attack, so if they try to walk away, I hit them in the legs because they have to crouch block that. I can walk up, fake a throw, and walk backwards and watch them with a throw, and then I can punish them out of that. You know, you have to have a proper mix-up set up, otherwise your frame advantage is just useless outside of a little bit of chip damage. But in the end, you're gonna wanna do a lot more than just that. Okay, so let's get back to the slides over here. Next thing is, I kinda wanna talk about this uh, from a defensive standpoint, because you know, I have been talking about things, uh, you know, from the offensive side, you're trying to get yourself into as much frame advantage as possible. This may sound really obvious and, uh, you know, kind of pointless to say, but I just want to point it out, you know, be wary of putting yourself into positions of frame disadvantage. There's definitely such things as frame disadvantage. Say hello to my cat Jasmine over here. So again, don't hit buttons all day, because if you whiff buttons, like I said earlier in the example, that puts you into a position of frame disadvantage, and you don't want to do that to yourself. And you know, we talked about economy of buttons earlier on. You always want to make sure that you're hitting buttons for reasons, right? If you can't tell me why you hit the button, you should not have hit the button. And now you'll understand why. Because if you're hitting a button and you have no idea why you hit the button, you have now put yourself in a frame disadvantage every time you hit a button. Every time you do an attack, like we saw that 25 frame Mika heavy attack, every time you do that, you're putting yourself into a frame disadvantage situation from your opponent. If you whiff, the opponent has the ability to take advantage of all of that recovery. So that's why you want to be as careful with your button presses as possible. There are also situations in this game, uh, we talked about this in um, using Laura as the example, I believe, uh, in an episode of the Chenzor Dojo, where you know someone kept doing Laura's elbow attack and uh, it was safe, she couldn't be punished, but she was always putting herself into a frame disadvantage. And so someone asked me a question during that. They asked, well, if it's safe, then why won't I keep abusing this if the opponent is blocking? And my answer was because you're always putting yourself at a position of frame disadvantage. Even though you're the one initiating the attack, by putting yourself into that position constantly, you are putting yourself in a position where the opponent now has the advantage, and if they recognize it, they'll turn that advantage into a mix-up. You're basically giving the opponent frame advantage, and if you keep doing that, you are not going to perform well in the long run. Uh, again, don't whiff uh, buttons needlessly. Another one on defense, be diligent on your anti-airs. Always make sure that, uh, uh, you you know, you're not going to anti-air everything. It's, it's hard to anti-air everything. Some players can, some players are ridiculous and just have that trigger finger on the jump. But for the most part, uh, even the best player is going to falter every once in a while. But if you are a player who goes, who thinks to themselves if someone jumps at you and you block it and you're like, well, well, I blocked it anyway, so I'm okay. Please get that idea out of your head. When you block a jump attack, you are at such a horrible position of disadvantage. So be diligent on your anti-airs. Again, anti-airs are moves that hit people while they're jumping at you so that you can keep them from getting these free jump-ins on uh, at you. So always be diligent on your anti-airs. And again, don't use unsafe moves too often. That was the example that I gave with Laura. Uh, but again, Winning is really going to come down to which player can put themselves at frame advantage more often. And that's why Street Fighter V is so scary. That's why when you guys watch a match of Street Fighter V, it can snowball so quickly. We see this often also happen in games like, um, in games like uh, Guilty Gear. When uh, an opponent gets a knockdown, all of a sudden, then they drop a fireball on top of you that you have to get up and block, and then they keep attacking you afterwards, and then you put a mix-up, and they knock you down, and they drop that fireball on you again. You get up, and you have to block it, and then they get a mix-up on you, and they repeat that over and over and over again. 
you know, this repeated sequence of knockdown pressure is kind of known in fighting game circles as the vortex. So uh, that you get kind of stuck in this vortex and you just get destroyed so quickly. And that happens a lot because one player just puts the opponent in a position where they don't have the ability to play the game. They just had to sit there, take it, lose, and they didn't get to play the game. So again, it's very important to be able to win where the opponent gets to do as little as possible. So in conclusion, you know, when you're playing fighting games, try to understand these positions of advantage. And uh, like I said, once I start getting into frame data in uh, a future episode, possibly the next episode, once I get into frame data, you're going to want to start understanding when you put yourself in advantage and disadvantage. A lot of times when I'm teaching fighting games to players, when I have them play on my stream, I'll tell them, oh, that person is plus on block, so you shouldn't be hitting buttons. Or you're plus on block, so you should be hitting buttons. And a lot of times the players will respond, oh, I had no idea. I didn't, I didn't know that that was the case. And, you know, again, this is starting where you have to start learning more, you know, move beyond the fundamentals concept and start learning character specifics. But trying to learn when moves are advantaged or disadvantaged are going to be very important, especially in a game like Street Fighter V, especially in a game like Grand Blue Fantasy Versus as well. That game has a lot of these situations, although far more universal and far more uh, consistent uh, than games like Street Fighter and Tekken. Tekken is, can be pretty consistent as well with their frame data, usually. Uh, moves that put them at advantage have a very similar attack vector. They always kind of come down and attack from the top. But again, if you start looking at fighting games, I've already taught you kind of how to look at the neutral. Once you start looking at the neutral, you look at the attack vectors as understanding how to defend and how to find your own ways to approach the opponent. Once you get those situations, like in that Ryu example that I gave earlier versus Mika, once you realize that, you have to start recognizing when you win the neutral and put yourself into an advantageous position, into a frame advantage, you now have to start thinking about turning that into a mix-up. And once you start getting into that flow, once you realize the three or four or five, you know, common ways that you can put yourself at an advantage, you are going to aim for those situations and develop mix-ups around there. You can develop mix-ups around some awesome scenario where you have all this frame advantage, but if you can't actually land that scenario, it's a useless mix-up. It's a useless frame advantage situation. So once you start figuring out which one are your common frame advantages, where you're going to get that frame advantage from the majority of the time, you're going to try to gear your gameplay towards those situations and then learn your mix-ups off of those advantage positions so you don't even have to think about it. You're playing your game, you, you're using the attack vectors to play neutral, you're using your ranges and spacing, you get the frame advantage and you immediately know what your mix-up is. You don't have to think about it. You already know all the options and that is going to be one of the most common ways that you're going to be trying to play fighting games. Is you're going to play that neutral, put yourself an advantage and apply the mix-up that you already know, that you've already used many, 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 many times. So a lot of it becomes muscle memory at that point. And so again, learn to start recognizing times at your advantage. If you're getting a jump in and you're not applying a mix up, then you're making a mistake. You're not recognizing that after the jump in, you are an, at an advantage and need to start applying the mix ups. And uh, so yeah, again, uh, as I mentioned, the next episode we're coming up, uh, I guess I put in my notes that we are going to talk all about frame data. So there you go. Next episode, we're going to talk all about frame data. Man, James, why you got to put me on the hook like this? Jeez. Uh, we're going to talk all about frame data in the next episode. So I'll give you an idea of how to understand frame data. And I'm going to try to do it conceptually. If you've seen my previous first attack episodes in which I talk about how to explain frame data uh, and how to interpret frame data, it's going to be very similar. But again, remember this year of first attack is a reboot. 
And so we're starting all over again from the beginning. And so I'm going to go over every concept I can again. But there you go. That is frame advantage. That is how you want to think about frame advantage. Again, frame, unit of time. Frame advantage, giving one character a head start over the other character. And in any sort of competitive environment, if you have a head start, you can set up Think of it as like having a head start so now you can set up booby traps for the other opponent who's trying to run through the race as well. You know, that's kind of how you want to look at it. By having that time advantage, that frame advantage, you give yourself more control to defeat the opponent. And that is Frame Advantage. Uh, if you guys have any questions about that, any clarifications, you know the drill. Send me emails. And again, I see your emails. I haven't responded to them. I'm terrible. I apologize. I will get to those questions soon. Uh, you can also send me messages on Twitter. Just make sure you put the hashtag first attack on there. So that way I can, re I can retweet it with a quote retweet and answer it for everybody who may also have that question. You can also jump on a future episode of the Chen reaction or even another first attack and ask me the next week uh, to for a follow-up answer. Um, but outside of that, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. You can also leave comments on the YouTube, of course, uh, down here on the comments as well. But thank you guys for watching this. Thank you guys for taking the time. Again, feedback, super valuable for me. Let me know how these episodes are going. If you like the shorter length better or if you want them to be long again, let me know how you guys prefer everything. And uh, hope this was useful to you guys. And always remember my old adage that you cannot... KO your opponent without your first attack. Thanks guys for watching. And again, please like and subscribe. Donations, subscriptions to the Twitch. All of that stuff is appreciated, especially during these times uh, of self-quarantine. <laughs> so uh, anything will help. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate your support. And have a good one.